What is up awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here, Electric Friday Views, and today we are reviewing the Unirau Fat HS Fat Tire Full Suspension Electric Mountain Bike. This thing is a beast, a beast of a mountain bike here. This thing has just got so much power, so much torque, so much speed. We're gonna dive into the specs here, but first, let's roll the B-roll. All right, awesome peeps. Again, this is the Unirau Fat HS Fat Tire Full Suspension Electric Mountain Bike right here. It is just a, just a beautiful ride. $27.99, so it is not a entry-level bike by any means. This is more of a, kind of like a professional grade electric bike, okay? That's, and that's the price point that reflects that. Now, this company, Unirau, does offer a 14-day money-back guarantee on their products and a two-year comprehensive warranty, which is really sweet. So if something does go wrong, you've got two full years to kind of execute that warranty. Something, something's wrong with the battery, they send you a new one, something's wrong with the motor, whatever, they, they fix that for you. So very cool, it gives you a good feeling of comfort when you do spend this much money um, on an electric bike that realistically you can't test before you buy it because it's direct order, right? So very cool, really like it when companies have um, generous warranties like two years, so good stuff. Right now, this bike does only come in this one color right here, it's kind of like a, something somewhere between like a mustard yellow and like an olive drab. Um, and then brown, and then only comes as one frame size right here. So maybe in the future they will offer more frame sizes and more colors, but right now, what you see is what you get, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm just calling that out. So let's dive into the specs here. We'll start with the motor right here in the middle of the bike, which is always a good start. So this is gonna be a mid-drive motor. It's a Bafang 1000 watt mid-drive motor with 120 newton meters of torque. It is just a monster of a motor. Peak wattage is around 1500 or so. It does have a torque sensor compared to a cadence sensor, which is awesome. So it measures the actual pressure you're placing on the cranks compared to the rotational speed of the cranks. So very responsive, very quick activation of the motor once, um, when you start pedaling and very quick deactivation when you stop pedaling. The, the gearing of the bike, just like how a car motor, you know, one motor, multiple gears, um, and it allows you to leverage it to get more power and more torque out of the motor compared to a cadence sensor, or sorry, compared to a, uh, a hub motor, which just kind of moves the back wheel, right? Or the front wheel, depending on where it's at. Now, this mid-drive motor here brings this bike up to a top speed of 28 miles per hour, which makes it a class three electric bike. You can reach that speed with the throttle, which is gonna be on the left-hand side right here. Boom. Or you can reach that with, like we talked about, the torque sensing uh, pedal assist. So two ways you can reach that there. In the back, we've got a Shimano Olivio 7-speed uh, derailleur right here. Very, very nice little upgrade. Typically, when we get to the derailleurs and it comes to a hub motor, you know, we say it doesn't really matter that much what the derailleur is. But in this case, with a mid-drive motor, you do want and you actually do need a higher quality derailleur to handle the extra stress that you get from mid-drive motor because the mid-drive motor, it places a lot more torque on the entire drivetrain and it can really stress the components out. So you want something that can handle it like the Shimano Olivio. Very nice shifting, very quick, very snappy. It also does have shift detection. Whenever I shift gears with this bike, it, it automatically like cuts power to the motor just for a brief second. And that again helps to alleviate the stress um, of the motor on the drivetrain. Because if you don't have shift detection with a mid-drive, especially when it's as powerful as this, and, and you shift gears without letting off the gas or without, without like kind of like easing up on the pedaling, you can easily snap some components. So shift detection, very important. And this one feels to be working quite well. Um, it's very sensitive, very accurate, and it's very quick. So it's just a deactivation, activation, deactivation, activation, really, really quick. You'll see here, like we talked about, this is a full suspension bike. Um, I just love that. So in the front here, we've got RST guide suspension. Decent little setup right here. It does have preload adjust. 
and lockout, so you can adjust you know, how spongy or how stiff the suspension is. About 80 millimeters of travel on this suspension. It also does have a rear spring suspension. Um, I'm not sure how much travel is in here, probably around 50 to 60 millimeters, something like that. But this also does have preload adjust as well, which is nice, so you can adjust you know, how, how stiff um, or how loose that rear suspension is, so, so good stuff. Now the battery on this bike, is actually housed inside the frame. So it's an internal battery, but it still is locking and removable. So you can pretty quickly take this battery out of the frame. But in order to do that, there is one screw right there on the underneath here. You do have to release that screw. Um, as soon as you do that, you can take this little brown cover off right here and the battery can pop out once you put the key in there and turn it and unlock it. So one quick little step. So, I mean, I would still say it's, it's pretty much hot swappable. It only takes about 30 seconds or so to get that battery out, um, so not a big deal. Now, the battery itself is going to be a 48 volt, 14.6 amp hour battery for a max range of about uh, 40 miles or so, just depending on how you ride this. And that's, that's what we always say with range, right? It's an estimated max range. And if you are in a low pedal assist setting, if you're in eco mode, if you're not going up steep hills, if you have the, the, the tires fully pressurized, yeah, you can get 40 miles out of this. But if you ride it like I do, <laughs> in the top pedal assist mode, using the throttle a whole bunch, going max speed pretty much the entire time. I mean, realistically, you probably get somewhere around half that, maybe 20 miles or so. And that's pretty average for us when we, when we actually do range tests. We typically get about half the range out of it. But again, max estimated range depends on how you ride it. The frame itself is 6061 aluminum alloy. And it's gonna weigh in at about 80 pounds or so. So it's kind of heavy but that does make sense because it's full suspension, fat tires, huge motor, decent sized battery. Yeah, I mean, I kind, of, I kind of would expect that. Now on the other side here, we've got hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear wheels here. Now, I think these are like, it might be Tektra, but I feel like they're no name hydraulic disc brakes and the stopping, these, they're, they're good but the stopping power is not as good as some of the other hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. It's just, you have to put a lot of pressure, um, you know, on the actual brake levers to kind of get the full stopping power. I don't know, maybe it just needs to be broken in. Sometimes with disc brakes, um, it does take a little bit to kind of break them in. There's kind of like a protective layer on them and it kind of reduces the friction because it's maybe for like rust or something and then after a while it wears off and then you kind of get a better grip so maybe that's what's going on here but just want to call that out but even still whew, i'm going to change direction the wind here is nuts <laughs> so windy even still the stopping power on this is is actually quite good so um yeah just want to call that out though what else can we talk about here quick release seat post you can change the height on the fly, not too bad. I do want to show you the light, the front light on this actually, because it is definitely noteworthy. So I'm gonna turn this on real quick. Okay. Now, I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but this is actually a pretty bright front headlight. One of the brightest ones we've seen stock on an electric bike. Very happy with this, very happy. You could probably even illuminate your path at low speeds at night with that headlight. So it's not just for visibility, increasing visibility so people can see you, but you can actually see with that headlight. So pretty cool. Also, because these are hydraulic disc brakes here, it means I can adjust the resting position of these levers. So I can bring these in like this, or I can let them out further you know, so they, the natural resting position is different. So if I have gloves on, bigger hands, smaller hands, I can just go ahead and adjust those. What else do we have here? The tires on this bad boy, 26 inch by four inch fat tires. I mean, look at the, just look at these massive, massive tires. The fat tires are awesome, especially for a bike like this that has the power to kind of handle these fat tires because fat tires are cool. They'll, look, they have more air volume, so they actually give you some extra suspension along with the full suspension of this bike, so that's nice. But more than that, they have a really wide tire patch and they just float over soggy terrain. So if you're gonna be taking this thing through like mud, sand, snow, uh, loose gravel, stuff like that, these fat tires are really gonna help. They also have a minimum PSI of just five. So at five PSI, you can air this thing down and the tire patch gets even wider. And it's like for snow especially, I mean, it's, it makes a big difference. Now, the, the, well, I do want to say one of the biggest negatives of fat tires is they're heavy, they're big, and it takes more effort for the motor to turn those things. So 
that's one of the reasons why having that powerful 1000 watt mid-drive motor does make a huge difference and just the way this bike feels and handles it feels aggressive um, and it just it, it feels like it wants to eat up the trails um, sometimes when you have fat tires and you get less power like 500 watt motor it can feel a little sluggish you know so moving on here to the display you probably saw a second ago i turned this thing on there we go uh, so we got a independent button pad right here on the left Got a mode button, plus, minus, and the power button. Hold the power button down, brings this thing to life. Here's the display right here. Um, it's pretty easily visible in broad daylight. Um, with my polarized sunglasses, it was, it's, it's just blocking it out. So uh, maybe this is already polarized and my polarization is like doubling up and, and kind of blacking out the screen. But when I have my sunglasses on, I can't really see it. Uh, that being said, it does have a five bar battery indicator right here on top. So uh, what is that, 20% increments? Not bad, I, I prefer a percentage indicator, but this is not bad. Little indicator right here to show you when the lights are on. What level of pedal assist you're in right here. So you can go from uh, zero all the way up to five. One, two, three, four, five, and that's turbo mode. Current um, miles per hour or kilometers per hour, you can switch that around. And then distance, speed, that's the display. It's a nice display. It is easy to see in direct sunlight, but if you have sunglasses on, that might prove to be an issue for you. Just something to keep in mind. All in all, guys, this is a sweet, sweet ride. It is so much fun to ride. The power, the torque on this is just disgusting. <laughs> it, is, it is a disgustingly powerful bike. These, the 1000 watt mid-drive motors from Buffang are hands down our favorite motor here at Electric Friday Views. They are just, you get so much out of those motors you know, for the price point compared to like a Bosch or a Broza, which is a lot as powerful, not as much torque. Yes, it's, you know, it's a little bit, yes, those are smoother, they're a little bit quieter, but man, when it comes to just like raw power, this is the way to go. So um, look, we have covered the specs in this thing. Now it is time to take the Unirail Fat HS Fat Tire, full suspension, looking mountain bike out for a ride. Here we go.
right, awesome peeps. That is pretty much it for the review of the Unirau Fat HS fat tire full suspension electric bike here in summer this thing starts for $2,799 $27.99 again this is not this is not an entry-level electric bike this price point is definitely in the upper tier almost professional grade e-mountain bike here but for that price like we talked about you're getting a pretty good bang for your buck one of my favorite things about this bike is going to be that mid-drive motor the 1000 watt the thing mid-drive with that 120 inch of torque and you put that in low gear climb up a hill and you can really feel the power of like leveraging against the the gearing like we talked about very cool stuff love the shimano olivia derailleur nice upgrade point there the full suspension internal battery the fat tires is all just a pretty sweet ride and really this bike right here is going to be geared towards you guys who want something that's a little bit more serious like if you want to be tackling some more advanced trails hitting some jumps hitting some really difficult stuff that just a normal kind of entry-level mountain bike just the components wouldn't be able to hold up the frame wouldn't be able to hold up but this is what the, this is what this bike is designed for for kind of taking a beating and just to keep on going so awesome peeps i hope you dug this review hope you guys are staying safe out there hope you're having an awesome day thank you very much for watching and i will catch you guys next time peace